So today uh, we're on 8.4, understand promotional channels used to communicate with target audiences. Before we talked about the marketing mix and that you got to have a variety of different ways to, to try and communicate with your target market, your customers. Uh, one of the main ones that a lot of folks use is advertising. So that's what we're going to focus on today. So we talk about advertising media refers to a variety of mass media or alternative media channels where businesses can promote their products, services, or brand. So again, just how the how you're going to get your product out there or your idea or whatever it may be, uh, how are you going to get that out to the target customer? Because that's the main thing we got to focus on is how we're going to get there. And we talk about using different avenues to put that out there so you can reach different target markets and to make sure that you do reach everyone. Uh, so we talk about how we're going to break down advertising media. The first one that we'll talk about is print publications. So the first one that we talk about is newspapers. Great well, great way to get in touch with customers because they reach a large audience. A lot of people, the newspaper can go out to a lot of folks. Um, anyone can place an advertisement. Now, this was once a very popular advertising medium, uh, though it's changing now because less people are reading the newspaper. So that adage of being able to reach such a large audience, at uh, one point in time, that was the, the main way. It was a great way to reach a lot of people. But as times are changing and people are changing, not as many people are per se reading the newspaper as it used to be. Um, in fact, very few young people actually read the newspaper. So if you're trying to advertise to a younger demographic, not going to be a very good, uh, very good way to, to go about doing that. When you look at advertising in the newspaper, uh, it varies on a lot of different things. How often they're published, some are daily and some are weekly. Uh, their size, uh, you have broadsheet size, which is the most common. That's your typical newspaper. Uh, National Enquirer, tabloid size a little bit smaller. Uh, what geographical areas they cover, some are national, some are state, some are local. So all those are going to vary depending on price and who you're trying to get after and whom they are intended to target. You look at the Wall Street Journal, which is more for business people, the Atlanta Voice, people around that area. Um, so newspapers are usually only going to go to a certain demographic or to a certain area. Um, the the local papers are usually only going to reach the local folks. They're not going to go out of state to other other places. Um, there are some national newspapers that are still published and still get some good good readership, although, you know, like I said, that's come down a little bit. Uh, advantages of the newspaper, for some of them, it's a low cost. Might have to pay quite as much as some of the other medias that we're going to talk about. And you know the distribution level. So you know where that newspaper is going. You know how many people it's going to. So you have a pretty good idea of how many people are actually going to be seeing your ad. Um, the disadvantages we talked about with, especially on a local, limited distribution. It's not going out too far. Uh, limited lifespan, you might only be putting it in one paper, and if someone doesn't happen to see it that day, you're not going to get any bang for your buck. You're not going to get anything back. Uh, newspapers, most newspapers are only black and white, and probably the, the main disadvantage that we talk about is less people are reading the newspaper than before. Um, so we'll, we'll add that one in there. And uh, like we said, especially younger people won't read the paper. So may not be the best one to go at. Just kind of depends on who you're trying to get at for your target market, as we've talked about. Uh, the next one that we talk about is magazine. Again, that's another type of print. So we have a couple different kinds of magazines. Consumers, so magazines people read for personal enjoyment, uh, target specific audience, people, Sports Illustrated, you know, Teen Vogue, Vogue, anything like that. Uh, business magazines appeal to people in all different industries. Business Week and Fortune, aimed at general population of workers. So more specific towards who they're going after. And then trade magazines aimed at specific areas of business or occupations. So advantages of magazine, color printing, you can do that. Very visually appealing. People can see that. Ability to target the desired audience. We know exactly who we're going at. We can manipulate our ad to go after who we exactly want to and reach our target customers. Uh, higher quality of medium, the newspapers, it's better, better paper that you're using in the magazine. It looks better. You can do color. Um, disadvantages, higher cost to create and produce. It's, it's expensive to put together an ad that's going to go in a magazine. Uh, more lead time required the newspapers, so you got to get it out there, and you got to set it up a lot ahead of time. Most of those magazines are printed maybe weeks ahead of time, so you got to have your ad ready to go. You can't really call them the day before. Um, and less people are reading magazines and, and getting them because they're getting it online. And that's really how things are changing now, that things are moving and shifting more towards being online-based. Uh, the next one that we'll talk about is broadcast media. So we talk about television. Uh, at one point in time, this was the most influential. It, it may very well still be that a lot of people are still watching television. Um, historically, one of the best-selling types of advertising media. 
Uh, something that I thought was neat on July first, nineteen forty-one, the first ever legal television advertisement was was made, um, and they reached four thousand televisions. So at that point in time, you got to think that was a lot of folks they were able to get that out to. Uh, with television, there's a lot of different advertising options. Uh, you could be on a network, ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox. So we're going to reach a very broad audience, but very expensive. All right, it's expensive to be on those major networks. We talk about cable and satellite channels. We can be target a more specific audience. Traditionally, this might be less expensive than network television. Just kind of depends on who you're going with. And then we have our local channels, PBS, things like that. Popular with small businesses. A lot cheaper. Targets small, highly specific audience because it is local. It's not going out very wide. So your, your reach isn't going to be quite as good as on a network or on cable. Uh, we have infomercials. I'm sure everyone's seen an infomercial. So they know what that is. Um, you can sponsor a specific TV program. So this program is brought to you by blah, 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 blah. Um, and as people are changing, they're now starting to create their own TV channels. Um, Hallmark has their own channel. Uh, Oprah has her own channel. So people are creating that channel to get their ideas or get their, their production seen on TV. Uh, advantage of television, the ability to demonstrate product features and benefits. You can show people and talk to them. Advertisers choose target audience based in time and station programming. So the big thing with advertising on television is the time and the station, right, and the length. Uh, disadvantages, it, it's high production. It costs a lot sometimes to make those, and your airtime can be very expensive. As we talked about before, depending on what city you're in, what time slot, all of these vary. Um, short lifespan might not last too long. You might only get one night or two nights of a television on TV. Uh, new technology has is, is enabled people to skip commercials, the HAPA. Uh, viewers tune out and ignore most commercials, and I think that's for most of us. And now we have our streaming options, and online viewers have pulled people away from traditional TV. Uh, I myself don't don't have traditional TV. We just watch everything online, as I'm sure most of you do being younger. So that's a big disadvantage for a lot of marketers, that they're not able to put those ads on TV and people are seeing them. So they're going to have to switch how they're doing and where they're putting those at, and we're going to talk about that here in a minute. Uh, the next one being radio, so effective and affordable advertising medium. You can target a very specific group of consumers, people that are listening to a specific station. Uh, as changes more stations go nationwide, you can reach a broader and broader audience because stations are starting to get picked up in more and more places. Uh, very cost effective. doesn't cost a lot usually to advertise on the radio. You can create it and change it quickly, so easy to create, easy to, to update and change. And you can reach... You know, your target audience through various station formats. You can get on different stations to reach different target audiences. Uh, the disadvantage, you, you know, it appeals only to sense of sound. So if you're trying to reach someone that can't hear, it's not going to work real well on the radio. Uh, short lifespan because it might not be on too long. Um, most listeners ignore commercials or change the station, which is probably true for me and probably true for most of us. And the, the number four, probably the biggest disadvantage, most people nowadays are using the aux cord. They're not really listening to the radio, especially younger folks aren't listening to the radio. So maybe not a good way to get after younger audiences because, you know, we plug in our phone and we start listening to what we want to listen to. We don't listen to the radio in the car as much as our parents or maybe as older folks used to back in the day. Uh, the next one we talk about direct, ma uh, direct mail. So things that are printed, so letters, catalogs, um, Relatively inexpensive. The dilemma could be considered junk mail, and people might just throw it away. Uh, and it has to be sent to the right people. So you're you're relying on a, a database of addresses that could be outdated. You think you're sending it to you know Jimmy, and he's not the one that's receiving it. So you know, kind of wasting that effort and time and money. So got to be careful with direct mail, just because you know, you got to make sure your lists are updated and that you're going out to the right person. Uh, electronic mail, so email delivered straight to email, quick, easy, and expensive. Uh, Although you know, a lot of us look at junk email, we just throw it away. We don't even bother to look at it. And that's where a lot of us are at today. We get a lot of junk email. We have spam filters that filter everything out. So we're not really getting those things that are directed towards us. Um, with that electronic mail, though, you can really target who it's going to be because you have their email address. You know I'm going directly to Jimmy. This is Jimmy's email address. I can send it straight to him. Uh, direct mail advantages. Can be highly selective and flexible with the format and timing. Yeah, we can select exactly who we want to go to, when we want to get there, and how it's set up. Uh, not very expensive to create and produce. You know, those are those are good things. The disadvantage: not a lot of response rate. All right, can be expensive to send it out and distribute, especially if you're looking at mailing something. And you know, it's usually junk mail that we're just taking and throwing away. 
So a lot of money is wasted on these publications that nobody's ever really looking at, whether that's going to be printed or email. Uh, the next one, and probably the, the biggest one that we'll talk about and the most relevant for a lot of us, is the internet and the web. Uh, so you know, everybody's got a website now, so customers can learn about your business, find your information, and we can place orders online. So that's coming into that direct to the producer. I can go to their website and buy something. We talked about before that. We talked about that before with our distribution, that now I can go straight to the company website and get whatever I need. Um, you can place your ad on other people's websites or apps. YouTube is now, you can't watch a video without seeing an ad for something else on YouTube. You see them popping up on Google. You see ads pop up all over the place. Uh, I listen to Pandora a lot, so I have an ad on there. It seems like every other song. Um, Spotify, I believe, has ads. So, you know, businesses are figuring out ways to be able to get people to hear their ad. You know, Pandora is one of them. You know, YouTube has changed a lot where it's now a lot more ad-based than it used to be. Good thing about online ads can be inexpensive, and you can make them interactive where someone has to click on them and use them to try and get to your site or get to whatever it is you're trying to advertise. Um, disadvantages, it's a nuisance. We don't, we don't like them. We just skip the ads. Low response rate, people aren't paying attention. And you have filters and pop-up blockers that block a lot of the ads um, that would normally come up on your website. So this has changed probably in the last you know, maybe 10 or 15 years where people have started doing more of this. We used to get a lot of pop-ups before where something would pop up as an advertisement. You don't see those too much anymore. Uh, another one that's just a real broad, uh, it's called out of home. Um, posters, panels, and billboards, and you can put those anywhere. It can be painted on the side of a building. The indoor billboards, subways, office buildings, you know, large elaborate electrical signs, spectaculars. We're starting to see more and more, more and more of the electrical signs because those messages can be changed. Right? They can determine how long your ad is up there, whether it's for a minute or five minutes or whatever it may be. So from that standpoint, they're able to get more stuff out there. You know, the owner of that sign is able to get more things out there. Um, you know, buses and shelters, human directionals. I think everybody's seen the, the commercial of the guy with the sign. I can't remember what insurance company it's for. But people wearing or holding signs to advertise for a business, you see that more in bigger cities where somebody's on the corner with a sign. Uh, blimps, hot air balloons, airborne displays. So most of this is relatively inexpensive especially with the billboards, a lot of them you can get 24-7 visibility. So it's always up there and people can always see it. Um, limited viewing time, especially with the billboard, once you drive by, I can't see it anymore. And I'm paying attention to the road, not always paying attention to the billboard. Uh, there's some increasing government regulations as far as what you can advertise and how and where. Uh, those things can, can be defaced, especially if it's on a building or somewhere. You know, Somebody can spray paint on it or cover it up or do whatever they want to it to, to ruin your message. Uh, and you can't target a specific audience. You're targeting everybody. So, you, you know, we talk about trying to get the most bang for your buck and make sure you can reach your target audience, and that might not be the best way to do it. Uh, number six, we talk about some other medias, uh, one of those being specialty. So specialty media, inexpensive, useful item with company's name and or logo. And the, great, and the best example, the pen that has the bank on there. Right? Those float around, and you can see those everywhere. Uh, company's name is visible. We, we as customers enjoy freebies. Everyone likes something for free. Um, disadvantages doesn't go out to a lot of people or a lot of places. And some of the people that are taking your free stuff, they never become customers. So you're just wasting that on them. They just want the free stuff. Um, an item must pass three criteria to qualify as a specialty media. Must have the business name or logo on it. Must be a useful item such as a pen or baseball cap, something someone's going to use on a regular basis. And it must be given away. So normally these are given away for free. Uh, the other one that it talks about is directory advertising. Yellow pages used to be a thing back in the day. That's kind of gone the way. Not a lot of people in the phone book anymore because we have cell phones, so we don't put that in the phone book. But back in the day, they had the yellow pages, which had the directory of all the different businesses back there. You could look up and find them in there. Um, you were able to, to get after a, a, a geographic area based on that. And you can target a lot of different demographics. Uh, with some of those, they're they're printed frequently, so that directory might be getting updated. So you can't really change what's going on, and you don't have a lot of space to put your information in there. Uh, movie theater, all right, uh, includes on-screen advertising. You know, with, with the COVID coming on, I'm not sure that's going to be a lot of good bang for your buck, whereas before we were getting a lot of folks at the movies, and you could see some ads up there, um, as well as poster stand-ups, other ads in the lobby. You know, that was a good 
way to reach a lot of folks because you're going to have a lot of folks coming in to watch the movies. Uh, one of the biggest ones that we see a lot of, and you might not realize, is, is product placement. So manufacturers pay millions of dollars for the right to use their products as movie props or television or videos or whatever it may be. Um, product placement is probably one of the, the higher ones on this list of the, the others that we talked about. Uh, telemarketing, and then we've all got phone calls from telemarketers. The, the big thing, do not call registries or limit the number of telemarketing calls that we're getting. Um, you know, it enables someone to call you back also and that, that 800 numbers that customers can call toll free. You know, that's a good thing. If I need to get a hold of a company. Um, however, you know, we don't like getting those phone calls 17 times a day about your, you know, your car loan or your car insurance. And I don't even have a car, but I'm getting these phone calls or your student loan debt or anything else like that. So it kind of become a, a nuisance from that aspect. Um, the, the biggest one and the one that's becoming more and more popular is social media. And we talked about internet before, social media. Advertising on Facebook. So the first social media ad placement occurred on Facebook in 2006. So we see Twitter now. You can see advertisements on there. Instagram has ads on there. LinkedIn. Uh, I've gotten text messages for advertisements about stuff. So more and more companies are realizing that social media is a good way to reach people. You can be real specific about where it's going. You, you can also reach a lot of people because a lot of people are using Facebook. A lot of people are using Twitter. Uh, within each of those apps, you can be a lot more descriptive and specific about who it's going out to.